Well, you cannot respond to a challenge unless you first recognize it, unless you first understand it. And we have failed as an ummah in even recognizing and understanding the challenges of the modern age. How can we respond to them? And so the failure is at the level of recognition and understanding. And so the question should be, why have we failed to recognize and to understand the challenges of the modern age? Why? And the answer appears to me to be the failure not of politicians, not of businessmen, the failure is not of those waging jihad on the battlefield. The failure is that of the scholars of Islam. And they have failed primarily because the institutions of Islamic learning, which are producing our world of scholarship, they have failed. An attempt was made to reorganize and revamp Al-Azhar University in the early part of the 20th century. An attempt was made, a half-hearted attempt to try to, to modify the Darul Ulum. And uh, what they did was to allow the religious subjects to remain on the curriculum but to add to these religious subjects what they call <laughs> secular subjects and so you had two two systems of education now in the Darul room and they were mutually exclusive of each other and that did not solve the problem because the graduates of the Darul room to this day have not successfully addressed the challenges of the modern age. If they had, then they would have recognized, for example, paper money to be bogus, to be fraudulent, to be utterly haram. They are incapable of doing that because they lack the scholarship to be able to evaluate it. They have not studied international monetary economics, but how is it that the scholars who are Muslims and who went to universities and who studied international monetary economics and they're Muslims and they pray Salat, how come they did not recognize it as well? It's not just the graduates of the Darul Um, it's also the graduates of the universities who studied international monetary economics. They also fail. The answer is that you have to take the Qur'an with you into the classroom. You have to be able to evaluate modern international monetary economics using the Qur'an and using the ahadith of Nabi Muhammad And no Darul Loom is doing that. None. One of the problems that they have in doing that is this fallacious belief that all the knowledge of Islam has already been given. It's there in the Qur'an, it's there in the Hadith. And there's no new knowledge to come. None. And so to take the Qur'an into the classroom of international monetary economics and use the Qur'an to form an evaluation concerning the validity of an international monetary system based on what they call fiat money. I don't know why they use the word fiat. I think fiat is not a... Not a good car at all. I see it shutting down all over the place. The Fiat motor car from Italy. But they call it Fiat money. I call it bogus money. That's a better term. Bogus money. I took the Quran with me into the classroom. And I used the Quran and the Hadith in the classroom of monetary economics at the Graduate Institute of International Studies in Geneva. And I gave my teacher hell 
because I was questioning him every day in the classroom as a doctoral student doing the PhD in Geneva until Professor Curzon, who was a professor teaching international economics, called me aside one day and said, Mr. Hussein, you know, you don't really have to attend my class. Meaning, don't come back to my class. <laughs> he says, just write the exam at the end of the year, that's fine. So I never returned to the class. At the end of the year, I took the exam and I passed the exam, alhamdulillah. But I was able to critically assess modern Western international economic theory using the Quran and using the Ahadith of Nabi Muhammad because I got my religious education from a different model of a Darul Ulum. My teacher Mawlana Fadlur Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah established a new model. He called it the Alimia Institute of Islamic Studies in Karachi, Pakistan. And there he did not give us two systems of education lying side by side. Islamic education and modern Western education. Not that nonsense. No. Rather, he gave us the Quran as the foundation of all knowledge. And whichever branch of knowledge we studied, for example, philosophy of history, I had to study philosophy of history as a student at the Alimi Institute of Islamic Studies. But in studying the philosophy of history, I was able to examine Hegel, for example, using the Quran. Using the Quran. And so the Quran is the foundation of all knowledge. And the Quran has a an inexhaustible supply of knowledge. And it has not been exhausted in the Tafasir. And so there's new knowledge still coming out of the Quran. And we have to be able to use the Quran to examine the world today, its reality, to penetrate that reality, to understand that reality, to articulate that reality, and then to respond to it. Instead of doing that, we are remaining with this system of education which is inadequate. And in addition to that, we are fighting over popcorn.